What is the truth in the stories we are told? We've been given a story of a world fueled by separation. We've become separate from one another, separate from the earth, ultimately separate from the true nature of ourselves. It's time we learn the truth. It's time you rewrite your story. It's time to realign with who it is that you really are. This is the fifth dimension. You are infinite and eternal. We are infinite and eternal. Our natural essence, we could say, is, is simply being. We have this awakening coming together as a perfect storm. We're ready for this. We have the capacity inside. We just got to find that. It's genuine. It's genuine. Very genuine. It's genuine. That's the way we do it around here. Well, we're on the air broadcasting globally, as a tarot card said earlier. Going oh, global. globally. Going yes. global. Going global. <laughs> not that big of a deal, you know. Just no, not at global. all. Breaking in the new studio, going with the flow. It's beautiful. I love it. I'm excited. I'm, Bam. Glad, I'm glad to be here. I'm here, home in South Dakota. We're no longer in Montana. How does that feel? Good, man. <laughs> it feels really South good. South Dakota feels good to have you here. It's bro. like a, it's like a breath of fresh air. Honestly, bro, I'm not gonna lie. It like really is. It's like a, a more peaceful, maybe. It's or... peaceful. It's quaint. It's like a little more genuine. Yeah, I mean, it's nice to live in a town without a fucking stoplight. Yep. You know, yeah, man. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know what I, I still mean. Still have people going through there. You know, like, but you know what I mean. You know, it's like just stop signs. Well, but... yeah, but the vibe of that is like. Mm -hmm. In a sense, where it's not the hustle and bustle of a city, yeah. you know, it takes it's, away from it. That's which is, you know, kind of a lot of things people seek for. You know, you know, if people have not been to a town without a stoplight, that means I haven't been to a small town. Yeah. I haven't seen small town America I've been through a lot of them. But this this feels like home, man. I think that's what it, this is what it is. It feels yeah. like a homecoming. We got some incense burning. We got new podcasts that are coming in the in the in the future. This is the first one of breaking in the new era, if you will. The new era. The new era. Of weather of, you That's know. What the, it'll say the new era. The new era. The new era. That's our slogan. Uh-huh. For the trifecta of light, fifth dimension, combining all of it into this new new scene. You know, that's what, that's what we're doing. And so we're glad everybody's tuning in because this is. Pretty if, amazing. Yeah, it feels genuine. It feels good to be back. I wouldn't want to be doing anything else at the moment. No. Me neither. Me neither. And I've been I've been waiting to get back on the air, you know, for like I've had episodes here and there over the last several months. And but, you know, the focus for me has been transitioning into yep. into whether, you know, coming back here, something new, something uh, new, yeah. you know, and you have to really go through the metamorphosis the, the metamorphosis the, the process change. of destruction of yeah, previous self as the tower, the tower moment yeah. yeah no and when, when you build like a you know you have to really continually ask yourself and i was asking myself this before i left like what am i doing uh -huh. yeah that's a pretty heavy question <laughs> what, am so, what am i doing <laughs> like what is this and then where am i <laughs> why am i here all oh, right and it's you like know? what is it that what is it that really matters at yeah. the end of the day yep. who are the people that are am really i happy matter? here right you know? and there you know like when i was living in montana i was i had a good life good people good yep. things you know great I've heard the stories you know i had a wonderful job at the at the shelter and good people you know oh shout out to all them fuckers over there oh yeah man um no i know you've, you've had a lot of uh but it's been on the experience i've been there. on the i've been on the journey and the journey calls you back home sometimes you know it's like you go out and you slay the dragons and you're like all right i have to go talk about my deeds you know? <laughs> let's go back let's share some let's see what has changed let's impart know? some wisdom and and things dude every i even got back to town within the first week i'm like nothing's changed but everything's changed well, then not only that, but like all the synchronized things that you were trying to get apartments, jobs of that, you know, all that stuff fell into place stuff that you have to do or have to have, you know, that was, yeah, that came uh, easy. Yeah. Like, bah, like, bah, bah, it didn't, it took no effort. You're like, oh, this is kind of surreal. Took no effort. This is how it was last time. <laughs> yeah. Well, 
pretty awesome. It's though. it's a good it's a good feeling to like. You have a nice kind of, little place here with a big ass parking lot and nice yep. neighbors and yep. like, nice in we, the heart of town. We got so. the nice studio set yeah, up right the here. Nice studio here, like. Um, I feel grateful. I definitely feel grateful, and I think the adventures are just starting. You know, in a way, because we got good stuff lined up. This is this is an announcement for anybody in South Dakota. Actually, we're gonna go to the. I wrote down the date of it. Yep. The holistic. In health and spirituality fair, we're gonna have a booth there. Sioux Falls in Sioux Falls, October. Sioux Falls, South Dakota, October fifth, two thousand twenty-four, fifteenth annual October holistic 5th. health spirituality fair. We'll have a booth. Come say hello. I think tickets for the whole event are like five bucks. So beautiful. <laughs> it's yeah. literally, literally come, come have a different experience and enjoy yourself. <laughs> no, seriously. I mean, it's Sioux Falls, South Dakota. If you find yourself in that area, come say hello. Yeah. Come. We'll be doing readings. We'll be doing readings. Maybe we can even bring the podcast. Giving readings out, out actually. You know? Well, that's the thing. Yeah, giving them out. Yeah. You want to stop by, say hello. That's something. If we feel that maybe uh you'd be drawn to a reading, we might. We might even call just. You in. We might even just say hey. I would really like to read your cards but uh come on up and find our booth we yeah. will we will be there and uh you know there's some good podcasts october 5th. and uh, october 5th that's one announcement to before we even really dive into discussion because there's so much we can discuss man like a lot of i've still been doing the before before i left last mm -hmm. time before i left south dakota two years ago i said i'm gonna make a tarot deck yep and, and then you mentioned it to me and I don't know if I really started it before I left. Maybe I had written like one or two things, but yeah. I wrote out the whole deck, but it was in alignment with that, you know, the idea of the hero's journey. Yeah. And it's like the, the, that was the book that you gave me about the hero's journey. Yeah. Right? And the backdrop of the hero's journey, it's behind all oh, wow. tales of like Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, all mm -hmm. these movies follow the hero, the hero's journey. It's like the myth, you know? You there's this call towards something higher than yourself. This call the towards reminds me of like the divine masculine's path. Like, yeah, like, or the divine feminine too. Well, one of the two. That's the thing, and then it turns in. It's like all encompassing, starting yeah. out as one to the other, just but rotating back to itself. You know, like it's yeah, and then you have this call to like awakening and adventure, and I mm -hmm. think everybody has that call at some level. In, purpose in some way yeah purpose, purpose yeah. well people the problem if you if you want we want to look at i mean it's it's tough to speak on like macro problems in the mm -hmm. whole world but i have a tendency to do it and just well like it we ball we figure it out um but you know i <laughs> you think when, about a lot of things at <laughs> once so. well i think the things that we see within our community mm -hmm. the problems we see in the community the problem we see within our own families we see within our own schools that's yep. on the it's the same problems at the macro level. The micro reflects the macro and vice yep. versa. So it's I think a reflection. I think the problem is we have no purpose. We have no call to something greater than oneself. No call to a hero's journey. No, uh, we're just working in this like box. systematic box, yep. the matrix of yep. keeping the system that we have no actual connection desires to. Desires and controls. Alive. And controls. Yeah, and it's a it's a way of life. It's a way of living, of sustaining life, but it's not truly living. And I think part of the reason I came back because I remembered last time I was here. And it was it's not just the feeling of nostalgia. I mean, sometimes you can look back on the past and maybe it wasn't like, for example, people look at old relationships and yep. maybe it was toxic, but then they look back and they remember the good things, right? Yeah, this wasn't good... one of the, this wasn't one of those cases where I'm looking at I'm thinking back on South Dakota where I'm only remembering good things. Mm -hmm. It's like I was on the here I was like on the sp the sp the amount of spiritual growth and exploration that I had here a couple years ago was unreal, unbelievable. Like and it's it's as soon as I came back, it's picked right up. <laughs> yeah, like most definitely the amount of growth in the past two to three weeks since I've been here and like learning spiritually and exploration and like coming back into myself has been like, Oh, this is what I was missing. Yep. You know, because when you go somewhere, especially if you're on your own, like you, you kind of, it's easy to not necessarily isolate yourself, but you get caught in the matrix. You get yeah. caught trying to survive. You're just trying another to... little cog in the big Yeah, yep. And we all try and lone wolf it in a yep. sense, you know? And, yep. I, I, exactly. and there's a time and a place to be that. But at the end of the day, you really got to find your, your like-minded people. You have to yeah. connect, man. You have to. Yeah. And I feel like that's why, I, that's what I've been able to do here. And I think if somebody doesn't have that, Maybe, I mean, it, I don't know if it's helpful to just go pick, pack your bags and leave where you're at. You yeah. know, it's important to, I think 
the people around you, your family, like that's where you're going to find real joy and solutions, belonging, and harmony, and you know, and peace, maybe for, peacefulness. for me, I, I, I found that here by going out on my own way and, you know, I didn't anticipate it being here when I first stepped foot in South Dakota, but here oh, I no. am. It was very odd to meet you here. Yeah. You wouldn't very, expect. very amazing. And it's one of my miracles in my life to call you my brother but yeah it's very i'm like what the fuck's this guy doing here and and awesome <laughs> why and maybe he could be my friend or you know like there's something about him that i know he's younger than me but not even that like no our souls are very similar yeah, ages man. well and that's you that you've been here your whole life though and so you haven't yeah. had to go out and venture off into in other lands and other like you know you have that that idea of the hero is well, one who needs to go on you have gone off and you've gone mm -hmm. on things and you've done shit but you've yeah. always come back almost always and you know you're grounded in the sense where i think a, i think a big it was problem more of like a uh adventure than like a journey you know what I mean? yeah like i had to hit all these places all around from wherever i was going missouri or illinois mm -hmm. california texas you know but just going to like adventure Right, but you're but knowing like I have to get home. You know where your roots are. I have to get home. Yeah, I think maybe an issue that we have on a on a deeper level in our culture is a lack of roots, a lack of connection to um, well, we've been not just disconnected a place. Yeah, yeah but we're connected from where we come from. We're disconnected from the root of who we are. We've yeah. forgotten who we are. Uh huh. And I think that's being disconnected makes you forget because mm -hmm. you don't realize what you were connected to. Yeah. You know? Right. And the tough thing is that there's no one solution to remember who we are because we're so multifaceted and no. so infinite in our. I think that just remembering uh, what it was and then embodying what it was to who you are. That's the first thing of it's not even trying to remember of like a real like way like this is this is how you're supposed to it's actually just do doing it, it being just it. doing it like what because there is no right way no, how man. i do it, it's gonna be different than you do it yeah. now somebody else is gonna do that, it now that's yeah. a lot of people you know trying to portray like something that they may not totally understand but and it's expression yeah it's expression, expression because expression comes from creativity and creativity comes from what love 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 comes from light and where does light come from? <laughs> the, light, light comes from source. Light comes from source. source comes from both. us. <laughs> and source comes from us. It comes full circle. Yeah, it has to. That's exactly. If it have it. us, it wouldn't be it. Mm. <laughs> That's good. That's like good. That? Yeah. I like that a lot. It comes back full circle because it does it never come ends. back to us. Because it's always creating all ominent, you know, like it's always loving and thinking and creating. And, and sometimes the creations aren't. You know the most of love and light but that it came from that right well all of it is an infinite expression of the same source that well in the light and the darkness they can't you they coexist i mean the yeah. darkness is really you could say it's the absence of light but it does have power in its own right i mean it is its own no it's, it's a definite, yin, it's, it's a, a definite it is a concrete yeah. force oh, you know yeah. you have yin you have yang you have light, you have dark, you can't destroy one or the other, oh. you know, and you have to embrace the fact that there are polarities that are, exist in this realm. You're not going to call, I, I think a big thing, people t take this stance that their own moral frameworks and their own ideas is good. Mm -hmm. And the things they see in the world yep. is evil yep. that, that they don't agree with yep. or that they don't like, or the, the political figures or this, well, or that, scenarios. this movement, yeah. this, so that many. Yep. it's evil. Well, and you know there are things that you could look at, and, maybe, and if and it, yeah, you could make a legitimate case that there are certain movements and ideologies that are legitimately evil because they harm others and they take meaning low vibrating, yeah, hurtful, dissonant, yeah, and like, and hurts kind of people, type, yeah, cuts people off from who they are, the essence of who they truly are. You could argue that that is the definition of evil, but it is it is still there to point us back to ourselves yeah, it's still well, serving side. still yeah. serving a higher if purpose. you didn't have those things we would just know the light the good and it really wouldn't be an what experience or meaning I yeah mean, we've had you to, have to we've had to experience it and i think it's it's easy to push away even if you look on an individual yep. level the shit that destroys us and oh, the, the pain the trauma like and Man, my the, even one incident, <laughs> it's like, but and we we are 
people of like many incidents you know mm -hmm. not saying that that's a good thing but meaning like and we we rebel through them we 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 experience them. We grow from them. Sometimes they are crushing and sometimes they do fucking end somebody, you know, and I understand that, but that didn't mean that it was just one or, or mm -hmm. you know, and that's just. Well, we, we, we got to decide for ourselves. Are we going to be crushed by yeah, exactly the, the moment you choose not to is the moment you grow stronger, faster. Well, the problem is the identification with pain as all we know and all that we cling on to it yep. because you know, let's say somebody, somebody hurts you, somebody, oh, whatever, hurt. you know, destroys you. you. How'd it happen? Man, yeah. have, <laughs> it sucks. We know, we know the feeling. It, it is, it is excruciating. Let's say, yeah, let's say somebody absolutely tears your heart to shreds. And so let's say that you, you're going to label this. I sorry for you, by the way, if you feel that way. I have had uh, it happen. Send you my love and affection because yeah. that, that is I empathize. Good, that hurt. is not a good place to be. In. And honestly, I, I this is kind of not unrelated, but I, I for things like that, it isn't about healing. It's about accepting and then letting go and choosing to move on. You don't fully let go of those pains. The scars are still there. No. Scars are going to be there. Always present. Scar and maybe they fade away after enough time, but but it's still reality. It's still it's reality. What happened. But the second you decide. I am the heart, this heartbroken being, and I am this, and they are the one that got away. You choose to run away from the potential possibilities of, well, they got, sure, they're, they got away, but maybe there's another one, right? Who yep. can come in and show me that there is a greater love possible. Not only possible. another one, but statistically, like a couple billion. <laughs> no lie, no offense. Right. It there goes is for both ways, you know. A hundred percent. And that's the thing, like, the so Sometimes if you're, you get stuck on the mm -hmm. feeling rather than actual the being and there's that, that being doesn't always continue to give you that feeling and there's a time and place to it's grieve like a drug yeah it is you know, it's a, it really it's a euphoric is. well you, in a way you yeah. could say with, with when you love people yep. they are you are not you're not using them but they are a vessel for you to experience love and to experience joy mm -hmm. and so when you have that taken away it's like you lose your connection to love. Yep. And it's I agree. It's shattering. Agree. It's like, wow, am I unworthy of that love? You don't yeah, that's you, how you, you view it. Yeah, and you and actually you don't even really know how to feel. Those are just kind of pieces of what you think you should might feel. <laughs> yeah. You're actually just so like broken and, and lost and hurt. And, and what really shamed in it. Just all the but just all of them. And it's not even specific. It's and I think a lot of times we search for like we want closure. We want an eye, we want rationalization. And I, for a lot of these things, we're never going to get that. And, uh, and that's well, we can't trick our mind that it didn't happen. No, yeah, we have to accept the yeah, fact. You have to accept it. You know, that's we why all the gurus and all the shamans and all the higher mm -hmm. dimensional people beings. They, you have to accept your reality, your your past. That's the first your, step. Is accept yeah, is to... is is seeing it, yep. acknowledging it. That's, they say that in shadow work, you know, mm -hmm. you have to go back to that and accept it and be okay with it. And you do. And, but, and I think too, we have to not just accept that, but then accept the grief. There's like this shame mm -hmm. built around oh, grief, geez. man. There's a shame built around grief. And like, you know, shit, my dad died almost 10 years ago. That's yeah. still sad. Oh, I mean, it's not, it's not I like, hope it is sad. I mean, <laughs> it's still sad. And I don't and just go away. I can yeah. sit here. I mean, I can sit here and say that and laugh because it's been enough time and it's not like this. But like, if you wanted to sit here and talk about it for 10 minutes, it, it, I mean, it's still, it's still it. emotional. It still brings things you stir up. Stir that stuff up. Yeah. That's what they say. It's at the bottom of the pot. You mm -hmm. Stir it up. And then you are going to feel that same yeah. exact pain that it happened the day it did happen. But then I could sit there and I could say, and I've told this story on the podcast before about being there in his last moments and like, you know, what a, tr what a, what a powerful transformation it was. The first actual conversations we had, mm -hmm. I remember that story. Yeah. Like I was there with you because you accounted for it so well. Yeah. And it it's... made me feel very honored to even know the story so thank you you're, you're welcome can you tell can you tell it again yeah i can That's i mean so you makes me believe you you know <laughs> <laughs> yeah well you know when he was he was in the icu and you know we all knew it was his last night the rest of the uh family decided they were gonna go home and i just had this feeling i'm like you know i just i just want to sit with him i gotta stay with him it was the first time in a couple of weeks that he even had the breathing tubes off and all that so he's just lying there he's all drugged up and whatnot but yeah. you know you could kind of tell he was 
he's still there. You know, you can still speak to him and like, you know, he's picking he's up. He's, he's here. He's here. He's present. The spirit's he's still there. Up, yeah. Much and he's able to. So I stayed there and I had a the girlfriend at the time who was very supportive during it. She stayed with me too. And just sat in there. I just talked to him for, had to be an hour or two. Yeah. And it got to 1 a.m. And, you know, you just start noticing the heart rate monitor going down and down and down and down and down. And it's like, well. It was around 1 a.m.? It was around 1 a.m. Yeah, right around 1 a.m. And like uh, after 1 a.m.? Right at about 1 a.m. Could it have know. been one eleven? Very possible. I would need, I don't know the exact. I know your address in Miller. Was right? one eleven when I moved to South Dakota. I know. I, and your life path master number is 11. Time. Yeah, I know. And your dad probably passed away at what time you think? Probably one eleven. I've had that thought. I, I've thought about it because well, I, I know it was at 1 a.m. It's a very synchron. That's a very synchronized thing. I can go back and look oh. at it when I texted my cousin okay. or called him because he was the first oh, person man. I called. But and then, I, you know, you just see it going down and down and you kind of have this realization like I have to be present with this. I have to accept this. It's here. And, you know, and you could tell he's still kind of holding on. So I said, you know, it's OK to let go. We're, we're me and my we brothers, you, we're, yeah. we're going to be all right. We're gonna make it. It's all right. You can lie. And and as soon as I said that, boom, boom, took maybe three more breaths and he was gone. That's fucking but awesome. the actual transformation, it's this like you. I got this almost like deep. Even gives me a kind of like goosebump yeah, thinking bro. about it. I it's feel like, it already over here. This deep like feeling of love. You know, it was love. It was pure love. That was it. The pure. purest. And and I think. You know, I always really sought my father's approval in a sense. Mm -hmm. Not that he was. He was very like most. You know, uh, boys do. Yeah, that's all yeah. you want to do. That's you want him. I, I loved when he would come to my sporting events and like. You know, it's kind of embedded and encrypted into our DNA. Mm -hmm. We want the approval because that's the man. That drives off. Yeah. <laughs> you know? Very genetic, you know? It's that's very DNA ish. Like, he's the man. Yeah. And so yep. I always sought his approval. He's the man, yep. And uh, so it, to, to like know that, that he's gone. That's mm -hmm. it. All right, I can't get his approval no more. Oh, He's gone. Oh, whatever but, you had from him, that's what you get to live with. So. But and just to be able to share that final moment and like witness death and witness transformation, mm -hmm. I look back at that with immense gratitude now. But I, I mean, I could have held on to that forever and just been in total sadness and denial and this and that. But I think seeing it, and this is another, this is another kind of a separate point i guess i think seeing it and witnessing witnessing it mm -hmm. it forced me to accept it it forced yeah, me it has to because like, that's the only reality because if i if i were to and i'm not criticizing people who didn't stay i did oh, wonder yeah. at the time i was like oh why am i the only one staying i get it um i don't know i just it, intuitively i'm like i can't leave no nope, you knew already but yeah. at the same time it's so common in our culture to avoid death and run away from death because they're scared of it it's scary it's scary it's finality it's the only thing that's certain in this life besides yeah, life itself often. it's the yin and yang it's the yin and yang it's yeah. life and it's death yeah. but it's integrated into one it has unit. to happen it yeah. has to happen and so seeing it it forced me to be like okay that was that was the most freeing part of my life yeah was i don't even know when it was but just to interrupt you quick like no, it is, please. If you understand, if you can, what you're saying, that's why that story was so amazing to me because, like, I understood what you meant when you told me the story. And I was like, it's freeing. It frees you. Frees you. Because it, the that's what you felt from your dad was his freeing. Mm -hmm. That's what it felt so lovely. The transformation. And, you Ooh. know, that's it. That's it. That's it a lot, man. You see his, yeah. You that's see the transformation in that he don't, okay, his physical body departs. No. Yep. But he ain't dead. No. <laughs> if anything he is more powerful, more powerful than he was life than he was sitting in that mm -hmm. corpse burger you know? that's right uh, that's right because he had, he had his own limitations he had his own faults oh. he had his own and but in the in the final moments it was pure love it was like yeah. wow this that's is why he got to ascend like that whoa he to... he... <laughs> yeah come on shit that's, that's magic if you could take that and eat that every day that mm -hmm. oh man yeah. no but yeah. seriously yeah. the 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 amount of love and if, if you could get to that level of love with people on a regular basis mm -hmm. if we could acknowledge the fact that we have that ending that mm -hmm. we have that death we're not gonna be here why are we not embracing one another one another and enjoying each other's companies and helping each other as much as we can and just being friendly and treat people like you want to be treated why are we not doing that on the daily 
You know, we we get caught in all the trivial bullshit and all the, you know, the division and the and the, uh, we That's we what run. What happens to sheep? We've ex- we've expressed mm-hmm. this. Uh huh. You know, I know, I know, and I, well, I we'll be talking. That's something we'll be. Talking that's about something too. we're gonna continue to explore. That and... should we uh maybe let everybody in on a little secret about what our first real podcast? Yeah, is what the, the share, topic. share, share. So one of the things that uh Evan really likes about South Dakota is the the CE five experiences oh, yeah. that we have here, and if I. If you don't know what CE5, it means close encounters of the fifth kind. There's like, you know, different steps. That Look up Dr. Stephen Greer Dr. Stephen if you Greer, need an yep. in-depth analysis. Very, we'll very we'll try and give you the, the... I'm just doing this off my head. Yeah, I'm not... There's a, there's a way better a way method. to look at this. Yeah, but just my method in general is just going in the backyard and looking at the stars, you know. It's been that way since I, I had met Evan, you know, mm-hmm. three, you know yeah. four years ago. So it's like... That's just kind of something that I really enjoy doing, you know? Well, 99% of the time there's things and, and lights and, and I say beings and, and ships and whatever you could probably imagine flying over my head on a daily basis. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and I can attest to it. I've seen it. I was Most there. You know, it's funny. I'm, I view myself as a very open person. Mm-hmm. And I remember the first, I remember watching, I think it was Close Encounters of the, maybe the third kind. Third kind I think yeah, it was Close Encounters kind. of the third kind. I remember watching that when you heard a lot, you said, let's go outside and do it. And in my head, I'm like, I don't know if this is going to work. There's yeah. no way. Yeah, like, I just had that definitely. natural skepticism. And then we go outside and I mean, and we start seeing shit and it's like, hold up. <laughs> Wait a minute. Well, yeah. <laughs> you know, and it's, it, but that's the difference in realities that you have to accept once you're like, Oh, uh, what is that? Well, and that's the thing. I think, you know, what's funny is it actually connects to everything we've already been talking about yep, too, because the, what it's, what it's teaching me is how much, how little, like how little we are and how little we know in this tiny little body and how much infinite is out there yep. that we can actually, and we're, how powerful we are to, we can lock in and have all own of it, in, use it and call, understand it. call yeah. these things in. And say that's what it's called. That's what it is. The CE five is actually you're basically kind of get, getting a in a meditative, you know, calm state, and mm-hmm. then focusing with your third eye or in your mind's eye or just in your conscious or sub, you know, whatever you want to call it in your head, and just sit with it. Yeah, and just be present with it, and watch what happens when you open your eyes. I promise, if you just do that, even for ten minutes, sometimes okay. it takes ten seconds. But you know what's interesting? When I was out in Montana the last couple of years, yep. and it's not like I was really going out too much and doing it. Um, mm-hmm. I didn't feel like I, the, the connection wasn't the there. connection wasn't there to the that outer worldly like phenomenon. And I don't know if it was because I was inside of a bigger city. I mean, it was still Montana. The night sky was still beautiful, even if I drove five ten minutes down the road from where I'm living. Right? I mean, it's Maybe not being that far away disconnected you. Yeah, I, I maybe, and, and I'm not not saying like, you know what I mean. Like, but I think you need to be tapped into your as much as you need to open up your third eye, right, and open up the crown and 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 these higher chakras. You also need to be tapped into your roots, and you need to be yeah. grounded. Yeah. And I think that's a big like that's what we were talking about earlier. Yeah. Like in order to actually access these higher channels, you need to you need to know who you are. You need and to be, be here, be present here, you need to be and present here, and set your foundation up here so that Mm -hmm. you can keep raising you know that's what a tree does yeah just like a tree you need to live life like a tree and live life like a tree i said that so many years ago man i said that in like 2020 and one of my yeah one of my friends at the time was like wow that's the most that's the most amazing thing i've ever heard you said that before too now and i just said it yeah live life like a tree man i've said that (laughs) live life like a tree oh man but no it's true though and uh, I think trees are probably the most like you, you want to talk about tree hugger. Mm-hmm. I'm talking like they're, they're, the most, they're probably the wisest beings on this planet yeah, in a okay. sense because they're alive. They have conscious thought. You know, it, I have a great book that's right over here. I would love to just die underneath a tree, be born underneath a tree, live in a tree, eat by a tree, you know, like all the things you could do with a tree. I would love to do. 
Hidden Life of Trees. I was rereading it, so don't mind the book. They feel how they communicate. Well, and it's a book about... um, Reminders to slow down and tune into the language of nature. Well, Take it, read it. It's a good book. Um, You'll really enjoy it because what it talks about, some of the things in there, it talks about how the trees, their root systems, you can make the argument that a forest is one being. The individual trees, like it's it's kind of like us, right? Yeah, they're... They're they're all their own individual unit point of expression but when you can if you look underneath the surface all the roots are connected they're all connected they're all feeding one another yep. they're all communicating with one another. this over here all these ones send it mm-hmm. to heal it that's, that's exactly, exactly what happens exactly so and it, it and that's that, what we kind of are you know we are the same points and when we feel like somebody needs help we send that energy and that help to them that's the you power know. of prayer. That's the power of manifestation. That's the power of you of tapping into the ether of the frequency because we are ultimately electromagnetic beings, yep. and we have the ability to harness that because we're this uh, this idea that we are physical. It's it's illusionary in that sense. That's how we tap in because energetically. We're on this kind of this plane, this three D plane. Mm-hmm. That's you know, our our consciousness is not of three D nature. Nope. Our consciousness is higher realm infinite well, yeah, well it's all of infinite. it it's infinite yeah. it's all of it it's, yeah, it's it, not just 3d or 11d it's infinite that's what our consciousness think of the internet but the real inner the internet <laughs> is a is a is a physical manifestation the of ether. the ether that's exactly okay, I, what I it is. Pulled the name out of the ether for you and said it at the same time. <laughs> it's a physical what, manifestation of the too. ether but anyways i hate to interrupt i have to use the head real quick Ooh, okay. Look at you. Oh, I need to get that. Oh no, I got that lighter. Mm. They're so greeny. Green. Green. Delicious. Get this shit burning. Let me get an extra one in case this one burns out. I'm gonna keep burning. Them. Incense is good, man. Yeah, it sets a good vibe and creates like a good. I don't know aura barrier type of thing the reason why people do it in rituals and stuff oh yeah for sure for sure 100 percent. we're doing none of natural we're just vibers that's right we're setting the vibes setting the vibes setting the vibe that's what one of kevin gates songs where's he at catching catching a vibe kevin gates if you hear this that'd be funny huh? <laughs> you're the next uh you're the next <laughs> you're the next contestant on huh? no come on over to the podcast kevin gates if anybody's got a contact info send it send it be cool. i'm sure we could find him on here but uh yeah smoke break is done we're back here we are hi hello 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 we heard some like land of the lost sleep stack shit Rep- anunnaki yeah, reptilian yeah. whatever is going on out there Better. yeah it's time to come back in <laughs> the all-seeing eye on top of a building looking at us from a yeah, distance that's, it's that's weird crazy. man weird stuff <laughs> no no it's crazy yeah it's funny how the matrix converges and you know it's like it tries to control tries to control and they, but you know all you can do, really do just laugh at it man. well it's a simple choice is all yeah all you can do is laugh at the laugh Choose not to have the control no no, well, we don't have control. Like, Mm-mm. control we don't have control of ourselves, anyways. Well, I mean, you know, in a sense, control is such an illusion. Like, it's I heard I saw this good photo the other day, and it's about it. It showed a picture of the dude grasping onto a rope, mm-hmm. and his the hand is like beat up, like all blood red, you know, but still holding on. But still holding on. A second he loosens it up, lets it go, pain goes away. Moment he squeezes it down, oh yeah, shoots it. That's exactly it, and that's the thing. We gotta so let it go. Then gotta embrace no control. That doesn't mean we don't have free will, but we. It's what we were talking about the other day, of how there's like infinite timelines, man. There's infinite possibilities. There's yeah, infinite realities. Thing is infinite. Like the, that's the thing. There is no limitation except the limitation that we place upon ourselves. It's like our minds, and I. I that's think the thing. that's what the matrix is. It's a program within your mind that creates limitations. It creates self-fulfilling prophecies. Yep. It creates scenarios that you willingly act out and choose to live by. 
And ultimately, a lot of people never escape that programming because That's why they people think like the simulation stuff, mm -hmm. predetermined stuff. Or... But the, they and they think when they think there's a simulation, they they think of a higher creator. Yep. The funny thing is, we are the creator of it. Yep. We're the creator of the matrix. We're the creator. You oh, know, everything. And and you know, you could talk. Everything. You could talk about you know man being. Um, you know, I tend to hold, hold the belief that the Anunnaki came and, you know, and they slide, they, they took man and sliced their own they DNA and it and then bread. I, I think there's some serious for, for a lot of reasons, mainly to main goal, mind gold, mind gold. And I think there's some serious truth to that. I actually found a great book on that over here. Gods of Eden, dude, I was at the thrift. This is a couple of years ago in downtown Chamberlain, the thrift God store of Eden at it was there. I've seen the guy that wrote that gods of Eden. Yeah. He's been on a few shows. I watch. Yeah. Yeah, I, I saw the book. I got the book randomly downtown. I had never heard of it, never heard of him. Oh, and about a, a couple weeks, and it was a couple weeks after I bought that book that you started talking about the Anunnaki, yep. and I started learning about it. And I was like, "Oh, I'm reading about that." Yeah, I, <laughs> as soon as I started finding out all that truth, I was uh, very, very connected to that and honed in. And I just want to know every aspect of all you know the cuneiform tablets, just every. I mean, and I don't not I don't know much. I was gonna say there's well. We can't. We're not going to sit here and claim to have all the answers oh, and no. claim to know everything. But there seems to be some Never truth when you look at all of the origin stories across different religions, even in different traditions, in the artwork that's depicted across all over the world in different monuments. You know, it all sort of points back back to the Anunnaki. Stems back to the stories of the Anunnaki, and you know, I I think there's some serious truth in that. But that being said. I mean, you could make the argument that they still have a level of presence and control, but at the same time, we have enough free will to where it doesn't. Yeah, because there, you know, that was so long ago. There, there was more beings and things and mm -hmm. higher energies still coming to Earth. I, I, I think. Yeah. Not just the Anunnaki, you know. So, I think now that you know they kind of did. I don't want to say leave because they never leave. You know, people beings like that aren't going to just take off and disappear yeah. you know i i just give you my my fucking light and my you know my my source and you think i'm going to just leave you out here for nothing but there's other things out there too that's there's an infinite amount of things and i i would say there's a there's a there's a a lower vibrational i don't even want to say being a frequency that dominates our system it dominates our culture that you could say maybe is that from the anunnaki is that from it's from the the hand that is that is kind of playing all the different parts and behind who the people behind that's the curtain. The, that's where it's coming from. Yep. Right. Yeah. And you could, that is still very present in our society based on the way our culture works and how our systems operate. And maybe but that's it, what, maybe that's them. Right. It could, it could be, it could be to say it's not, you know, but who are the ones that uphold that? It's us. It's us. It's us. And so we're the ones who choose to still acquiesce to it. Yep. Right, we're the we're the ones who decide. You know, the big, big fucking <laughs> scam right there. Yeah, like, exactly. They get you to choose to listen to what they say. Right, and really, they have no power. No, that's, that's the thing, and that's what's so unfair to everybody else that is listening to it. It's like you're not a slave, no different than they are not a slave, right. or 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 they're not a slave. Like we're all beings, we're all alive. Like no one has the sway over another one you know we're, it's not fair we're put into a cage at birth but the paradox is that the cage is in our own mind yep. and we can open it at any point yep. we can choose to walk out of it now there are certain it's interesting because it's like the idea of a wolf right mm -hmm. let's look at the domestication of a wolf a wolf became a fucking chihuahua yeah basically yep look at a chihuahua yep. that thing is whatever all right, mm -hmm. but what? So, if you were to take man in the same analogy, yep. let's say man is the Chihuahua. Okay, what were we before? Are we able to get back to our origin of? Because you could say man has gone through that. Well, man, yeah, man definitely. has gone through that same level of domestication. Yep. In that same level of conforming down to. This is where where you're at. Yeah, we're domesticated to this level. The same level of wolf to a fucking chihuahua. That's what I would argue. So are we gonna become a wolf again overnight? No. Probably not. No. Are we gonna become a wolf tomorrow? Probably not. Or 50 years from now? Probably There's gonna not. be certain limitations that we have. Yep. 
right? And that's we have to accept that. But there's no shame in saying that. No, and also we can easily get back there too. Right. It's yeah. just simply about choosing to I'm gonna reclaim my my divinity, yeah. my wild nature, and from there. Fuck it. How do you, uh, you, you still going to have to play the game a bit because you got to survive and you got to take care of your family. And there's a level of communal responsibility that I think we all are going to naturally feel. So you have to play, but you don't have to play in a way that you're enslaved. No, it's still a game. It's still a game. It's still a game in their eyes. You know, like you don't have to look at it as a game so much as the only thing I do when I level up or when I attain something, I'm like, oh yeah, I'm more powerful, you know, but I don't. I'm not really looking at it like a game, but in their eyes, it's like a game. You do it like this, your program like this, you go with here, you do that. Like, that's why you have to almost, like you said, understand what it is yeah. and kind of weave your way through it so that you're not just stuck. Right. And I think the foundation, a lot of times, you know, you could look at like Andrew Tate or something. Mm -hmm. He talks about escaping the matrix, but yet his primary and this is not a knock. It is a knock on Andrew Tate, but it's also not, a, I'm not trying to criticize, no. but it seems a lot of his messaging is still, look at my Bugatti, look at my material around, look at my material, yeah. which you could argue that having a vast quantity of material wealth, I mean, it ain't going to hurt in terms of, it ain't going to no. hurt. It ain't going to hurt. I think it'll help. It could help of, you. Uh, it, can, it could certainly help. Different paths that you're choosing. To <laughs> you know, if, if I got money to throw around for Bugattis, you yeah. know, I'm not worrying about, I'm not in survival mode. No. So there's a deep truth to the acquisition of material as a means to find freedom because you can create the scenario where you don't need to be in that survival fight or flight mode that trying to survive in the yeah. matrix puts you in. Don't you think that if you attain something like that, Evan, that after you attain it and you get to that stance in your life, you'd be able to not have that. And then you would kind of stop talking about it and stop being it. Like, no, you're so fixated and stuck on that aspect. Right. The survival mode is always there for you because you think, oh, I need more. It's it's a it, and you it, we'd have warehouses of, of Bugabi. Right. I'm not sitting here. I don't. I can't say I. No. I know what Andrew Tate has done. Like he, I'm. I don't have a fucking Bugatti, you know, <laughs> I don't got his okay. money and that's okay. Yeah. That's okay. And I, but that's what I'm trying to, that's what I'm, yeah, it's the point I'm trying to make. We're like, really just here talking about like maybe not what, what we think the important thing is, but what we really have come to learn that this is the only attainable thing. Right. And I, I don't think it's not all about the just truth. Yeah. That's the number. That's the foundation. Yeah. That's the foundation. It's truth. The path of truth. I went to the Buddha garden. And in Montana, huh? in Montana yep. the garden of a thousand Buddhas. And this is, there's this idea behind the a thousand Buddhas that, um, outside of the one enlightened Buddha, there are going to, there are different, there are a thousand different paths of the Buddha that one person is going to incarnate and walk the path of that Buddha. And when all a thousand Buddhas have come in and I might be butchering this, if I, if you're a, if you're a diehard Buddhist and I'm getting this wrong, please tell me, but this is my, under, this is, this is my understanding of it. Apologize. This is what it gave me the impression of when I learned about it there. Um, when these a thousand paths are walked to the level of the, like an enlightenment in a sense, yep. that's going to bring about the heaven on earth. And, you know, but it's, it's about having these foundations. Remember who the last things. Buddha is that goes after all of them. Right. My well, nature the laughing Buddha member. Mm -hmm. And, but <laughs> I, I, I gave myself the number. I gave myself a number and I said, all right, whatever my number uh, it was 333. Yep, 333. I said 333. 333. I'm going to go up to Buddha number 333 because each numbered Buddha had its had a path. Mm -hmm. And I said, this is going to be my path. Yep. If I have to be a, like if a I, really extravagant uh, yeah. fortune telling cookie type of thing. Yeah. And I you said, know, if, if this well, is going to, yeah, this exactly. is going to be my path, number sounds, 333. Sounds beautiful, and yeah. I walked up to it and it was the Buddha of truth. A <laughs> oh geez. <laughs> it was the Buddha. Remember, of, that's what I was just saying about truth. <laughs> that's, that's why I read oh, out. Yeah, it was the Buddha of truth. And I was like, you know, and I, I was kind of thinking about it. I'm like, Hulk, you know, we can't make this stuff up. No. And I was, and when I was there, I was thinking about it. I was like, you know, it feels like my whole life has just been a, I just want to know the truth. Yep. Just don't fuck with me. I, I want to know, it, it, you know, that's, that's what I'm seeking to understand, you know, and there's, but there's 999 other paths. Yep.
So it's not, if truth is not your primary focus, that's cool. But you, you know, you know, your lane, there's you know, lot, your path more choices too. You know. Right. And there's, there's nuance in that. But for me, I think that's why I podcast. Yep. That's why I do. I agree with you. I, I, I enjoy seeking truth. So that's, that's my own path. And that's how I'm going to attain. You could say enlightenment. I don't know. You can't really. Maybe. I don't know. We not don't know to place that. a limitation upon it, but. Yeah, we don't know that though, you know. Right. You can attain enlightenment from podcasting. In, right. In a sense. It'll bring me to where I need to be. Yep. Well, um, look where it brought me. Like, yeah, I, you know, I, for sure, I'm on the bro. same wavelength as you in a lot of senses, you know, but I was never really, and I did some podcasting with you, you know, but I was always more enjoying the, what the message was or what the topic mm -hmm. was or what your guys' energy was or just. And yeah, here you how are. How you were that day or what, you know, or, and, and I do have, you know, a lot of, uh, favorites you might say on your podcast they're all amazing and great don't get me wrong but oh yeah so there's more that are going to resonate yeah, based on man, certain with subjects. anybody and everyone but on the other hand like it was just so interesting to like watch you interact with these people and enjoy yourself and and talk about some things that like most most people would love to just listen to let alone experience and try to talk about to explore so, and explore uncover. with it yeah because that's the main goal is like we're out here like trying to talk about things that are very interesting to us and yeah. people around us in our in our circle our tribe but if we can talk about them and get them out there globally which we are oh that's bro. what we're doing hello to exactly. our listeners hello exactly. to our listeners in uzbekistan or wherever the fuck you're yeah, from how about <laughs> say, uh, that one bangkok bangkok over What's in thailand bangkok? No, nah, you know what? Uh, you know what the um, Argentina. You know what the number one? Fuck, I'm trying to remember what the number one city was for the podcast because I get all the audio oh, stats. Yeah, and I got the there stats. Is one. They're the number one city. I'm almost certain was the top five of the four of the top five cities. Yeah. that the podcast listened to is in Australia. Oh, you awesome, you Aussie dude. I know. So Australia, shout out to Australia because they actually fuck with the podcast heavy. a lot of australian friends yeah. aborigines friends too man from throughout the years on the internet and gaming and stuff like yeah man i really I had, so, a, I had a buddy named to shout out to rostick if you ever listen to this like he played this game imagine he just happened oh, to dude, be, a, be a regular like, listener well, be like, hey, i know who that guy is <laughs> only this person knows that name you know yeah that's cool but oh man but, I think so it, I you think know just, it gets out there it's cool yeah. it does that's we're getting this out there and i think that's the 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 point for me is to just Fuck, I like to connect with people. I like to uncover truth. And I know that's what you're doing. I'd be curious to see whatever number you walk up to in the Buddha garden, you know, and just say, and, and the thing was, I looked online. I tried to find like the, what it like the same representation of the numbers. It's only at the garden. Like I couldn't. I know. So you'd have to go there. Guy. Yeah. You'd have to go I there for like an hour. I just wanted to know because <laughs> I knew which one I would pick. I remember I told yep, you three, three six, six nine. nine. So I, you that anybody who's in Montana. I recommend going to the Garden of a Thousand Buddhas. Very deep. It's near. It's out near Missoula. Very deep, powerful experience. So worth checking out. Man, but kind of camera savvy. Yeah. You obviously know you are. You. That's why you get on there too. But I'm like, oh yeah, I'd, I'd watch that guy. Yeah. No. Hey, you gotta. You gotta have the. You know. It's it's funny. I used to always. My dad did radio for a long time, mm -hmm. and he used to always say, he had the face for radio. So I took, awesome. I took that too. So I was more of the audio. I'm like, you know, I, I got the face for radio. Yep. You don't see radio people. Uh, that's why I had the, on. that's how I got the face for it. You know? So I used to say that, but I'm taking on the. I like seeing your face on the radio. Oh, I mean the internet. <laughs> With a virtual radio. No, I mean, that's basically what we're doing. Podcasts are no different than just new, it's new form of radio programming, you know? So. What about um, that? Uh, so. Our our uh, first actual episode of the the new collaboration of the fifth dimension and trifecta of light. We definitely are doing CE five, right? Oh, hundred okay. percent. We could do it like we could even do it on a like do a podcast while and then doing, while we're doing CE five. Oh, man, I don't know if that'd be a good idea. That'd be amazing. What you Only about? because they might you know. Coming out. Like, <laughs> yeah. No, this is our first time, guys. You don't get the ex exclusive. Like, let us let us hang out for a little bit. Well, I think what we'll do, we'll end up we can have an in-depth, like, you know, even guide people through it, guys. Mm -hmm. You know, I think that's what we should do. Because we really, touched on well, it. There's I'm sure that Dr. Stephen Greer would not um be against us like 
talking about his, you know, sharing a method to anybody who's interested. Of, of how this, how you connect. I don't think he would. He'd probably be more. What do you think? Know, um, what do you think? Who do you think they are that we talk to when the when you have in a general when you when you so to, for context, anybody who's never done CE five, you go out there, you get into the meditative state, and you start looking at the sky. You're you're genuinely you're putting your energy out there, and you can almost feel the red like the resonance a coming back. back. You, yeah. It's like it's like when somebody's communicating with you and you're and you're locked in and you're tuned in with them. Yep. It's like you feel that coming from the sky, and then you start seeing shit in formation. Something and like, like when you have a conversation with some, like what we're doing mm -hmm. right now, I I can feel that I'm having a conversation. If that makes sense to anybody, like I know that I'm interacting with somebody and talking to somebody, and you know all these things. But with what Evan said, when you're med meditating on the universe, on the stars, on on the vastness of an in infinity, like you can feel something there with you. Exactly. Exactly. Sometimes it's a lot of some things. And it's, it's tough to like, it's hard to explain because we did have, I mean, there's a couple well, points where I remember a couple of years ago, man, when we were down by the river yep. and we had the I'm shit, yep. we had the shit that came down and was like on the shoreline lights on the shoreline things on the like so they many a many a different scenarios and objects and lights mm -hmm. and things like it wasn't so just one it's not always subject no. to just the sky no this shit comes down well, and there's people who have done these ce5 experiences and they captured they, images they, of those things like dr stephen greer he had in mm -hmm. one of his documentaries they were recording and they did the same thing we're doing and they captured images of these beings yeah down there with them it's amazing yeah and so I'll tell you that. And so all of his listeners. So it's not just me and your word, you know. It's, and what's beautiful is anybody can do this. Doesn't matter who you are. Anybody I my dad one time, you know, because he's a very spiritual person. But I said, Dad, I'm outside once. I said it's a perfect sky for this. I said, watch when I focus in the sky and I point. And the moment I did that, I didn't that's how it was just beautiful. The moment I did that, he said, Oh no, we're not doing this. What is that? And I'm like, <laughs> Well, that's what we were talking about. He's like, no, I'm getting out of here. I'm going inside. Thank you, son. It was just amazing. It was yeah. that quick. You know? And he just not... he was that open to actually, and he's... He's, he's a very open guy. He goes, oh, okay, well, I'm going back inside. He knew You're it. You're spooking me out, Tone. You're spooking me out. Well, and that's the thing. We can't, we can't go in with fear. If it's your fear, you're not going to get a response. I remember the other night when I was kind of talking about how when you do notice something, mm -hmm. it's almost as if... They notice that you notice, and if you aren't okay with it, they'll stop. It'll go away. Yeah, it'll so, go. Away. And like, I, it, you almost like, and I, 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 I almost struggle to put into words because it's such of agreement. It's such a, it's such an experience that's like, you know, because you're connecting. It's like you know, we have, to have a pet. You you spend love to your pet. Your pet loves you. There's no words. There's no, there's no worry or there's no, it's just, yeah, there's, they're together. They're together. Yep. And it's the same type of experience. Oh, well, that's a very good. It's the same, it's the same type of experience and you can communicate that. in a way that's not verbal. And, okay. and you can, I mean, you can, you can verbalize, you can verbalize your thoughts and you can verbalize the energy you behind it, to. but you don't need to. They're already connected. How do you think they know mm -hmm. you're sitting right there? Right. It's very easy to try to, because I've had people and this, and just because, we haven't talked about it. I've had, I don't know, maybe 10 to 15 different people that I trust that I have brought back in the yard, including mm -hmm. my entire family and shown them these things. And they're like, wow, I would be doing this every night. And I'm like, I do. <laughs> yeah, you do. You yeah. Know? So this isn't something that I'm just like thinking is just for me only, you know, I just do it every night or I try and not every night, you know, but I do yeah. it in general a lot. So just having p other people out there with me, is just an amazing experience, you know? Yeah, we're just trying to show people that it's real. What do you think they want? Just to connect. Why? Because we're trying to connect. Because we're we're out here looking for something that we know is there, and we really think we deserve it. What What do you think would like be the? I guess I don't want to say ramifications, but like. You know, you start this. Is, this becomes open. You start having it'll relationship be, with higher beings. It'll, it'll be can try to be controlled. Yeah. And if, well, that's probably why it's suppressed. Down, that's because that's why it is. But if it happens to everybody. You can't suppress that. 
and everybody would know and you would have you if you went against it that's like going against a grain you're not winning going against the tide you're not winning here's the pebble which is the ones controlling it here's the tide which is all of us look you have it right here on your tapestry yeah even though that sun is powerful and bright okay that's going over it i'm not saying it's going to put it out forever but that's the tide sure that's bright but that's not up in the sky that's down there in the ocean with with the moon like mm -hmm. you know yeah that's why they're so yin yang they're you know. so what i'm saying though is that even if they think they have all the control over something like this, you have no control at all because those beings, they're they're very loving and friendly. If if you can look at it this way, the technology they have could wipe out us so easy. Easy. So easy. Because the stuff that we get from them is so much more advanced advanced than what we use. But the stuff that they have, they don't even need to be negative because of this zoo. Like, well, and it's like that uh, story of the, what was it, yeah. Russia or Siberia or something? They go down to the bottom of that, uh, uh, what the fuck is it, a lake or that? Yeah, lake, by, lake by call. Lake by call. And they go down to the bottom of it and they see them fucking beings and they start, they get the orders to shoot they're at it. They're scared at first, so they come back and they're like, we're not, we need to get out of <laughs> it. And then their, their officer says, you will get back down there and capture those things. And they're like, what? Like, and they, they start shoot. They go down there and they see him again. They start shooting at him. And the dude, no, they were start shooting nets, <laughs> not the, even bullets. They're shooting nets. And the beings are like, nope. It sends them on up. <laughs> that those nine foot tall beings with jellyfish over their head did some hand gesture thing and shot them two hundred <laughs> meters in the fucking air through the water. Right. And then they all almost died except for two of them from decompression sickness. Wow. <laughs> they didn't even. So if they can do that with a jellyfish, yeah. Imagine what they can do with like. This quartz crystal, like right, exa <laughs> exactly, you know? exactly. So I mean, this could take out our whole universe. It goes to show you the capabilities yes. of this higher intelligence that of are our, out of there. our infinite experience, our infinite universe, our Cause this source. When we're we're multi dimensional beings, and you know, we I, there's a reason I called the podcast the fifth dimension because in theory, we're tapping in to a higher dimensional of consciousness, consciousness beyond the third dimensional plane into this ethereal realm of, uh, of the fifth dimension yeah. through our thought forms, fifth through dimension. our conversation. And we're going, we're tapping into the ether. That's we're what there. we're doing. Right. We, we that's just have to be here on this 3d to ground and to root. That's where, that's where the body don't, is. Don't get me wrong. We're very in tune with the fifth dimension, but, and there's beings that exist in these higher dimensions with different capabilities in different form because attributes, attributes, because the fifth like, dimension is not physical. No, it's not, but, but it, but the, the experience is almost more solid than anything. Right. It's more real. It's more and real. once you, once you know you it, you don't need the, the, denseness of matter but in the that's what the human experience is it's the you see, imagine how vast like that wow the, like yeah the thing like whoa well and that's the thing we're we're bound to third dimensional bodies in at least in the form of like the, here i mean you can meditate and you can astral project and travel and there's all these ways of escaping and, and connecting into higher realms of dimensions but there are these beings that they're not bound to the third dimension like our bodies are right Higher. so they have different capabilities they have different abilities different perceptions different ways of being and so we have to accept that we're not gonna it's like taking a 2d triangle and trying to see a 3d pyramid not it's not there it. no. it's not there they can they can turn their 3d into 2d into 2d so you know what they are but or even kind of skew it so you're like oh wow that's different so that, you know <laughs> trying to be something that they are as far like for example one of the uh, encounters that I have is like a, a low flying orange light mm -hmm. low flying and, and moving very slowly and almost like a wandering type of like like you would imagine seeing a fairy going through the woods you know in like a, a cartoon book or something whatever but yeah I'll, it'll go over my house multiple times throughout the year but when it notices that I'm focused on it it will either get really bright for a, a second or two or it'll dim Mm. like right so it's just really it knows that i'm aware of it and, right and to what it is i don't it's tough to if know it, if it was a drone it'd be a pretty weird 
but time but be flying drones or something like that with us you know what i mean like, and we've we've had enough experiences yeah. to where that are so vast and different that it's like you can't we know okay that. maybe that's a drone but what's that and then what's that and then what's that after these other 40 ones that you see mm -hmm. maybe that one sure that was a drone i'll even give you that even if i don't believe it but the other 39 of them like we saw a lot just the other night the ones that like it looked like it flew in formation and broke off into three different. Oh, dude, it literally was. Yeah. Like, yeah, it literally was solid object of something. In the way it, 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 it flew above, oh. right over us, it almost looks like it, it manipulated its physical, like, shape and, shape and turned into, and like, morphed. morphed into an, yeah. another thing, but then returned right back to it. And it's like, okay, how do you explain that? Is that a drone? Oh, yeah. <laughs> You're right, you know? That could be nothing but whatever it is. And I don't even know what it is. See, right. I we can't give it a name. can't explain it. No, it looked like some very scientific sci-fi, like... And so, <laughs> but, and, and we, and we don't call these things in with fear or, of, or no. afraid of them. And they show themselves in that way because we're open to experiencing it. Yep. And that's their way of well, like signaling... You know, yeah, maybe we we're trying to have a podcast with them. We're like, well, and we're going to. That's yeah. that's going to be one of our goals. Get one podcast. of these higher beings on. Maybe they'll just show up in the that form of some up. random human, and we don't even realize that they're taking the form. Be, though. You know, that's fine with me. So, but that's that's what we do. And then, you know, I had the, I was off camping out by Fort Pierre yep. uh, a couple of years ago, and I had my mothership experience. Down, yep. It was, and dude, you know what time it was? It was fucking. It was right at past 11 o'clock probably right probably at 11, 11, 11, 11 11 probably at 11 11. Was 11 i was sitting yeah. on the ground i didn't have i didn't have a blanket i didn't have any of my uh chairs i was sitting on the ground barefoot it's getting cold i'm sitting there just looking in the fire like fucking caveman that i am yep. and then all of a sudden i start meditation though yeah and i and i hear like that it almost sounds like a helicopter like, ah, damn that thing is getting close and i look up man it's taking it's starts coming in the picture it takes up the entire skyline there's all these fucking lights yep, all over it you're, you're looking up at the whole thing and like... it's and it sounds like i'm on a runway at an airport like it is so loud and i was only one in the campground but well, i'm like I always ask I'm... people about when they meet the when they enter like in these motherships like mm -hmm. feeling them come over them or even experience them like that did it feel like that sound was like could have been magnetic oh, oh my goodness yeah yeah sense? yeah exactly magnetic. Like it was like pulsating. a it felt like a pulsation through me it felt like it it was no such thing as coincidence no that's exactly what it felt I've like. asked other people that's, that's it and but you know what's interesting is that i've always heard that they're very fascinated by nuclear there is a nuclear power plant right over there i was camping right near it and pier there's one yep really nuclear I didn't know that. yeah there's the one i looked it up there's a nuclear thing right over there in south it's, dakota yeah they have a nuclear power plant yeah, nuclear energy oh, over there. Oh, my lord. Nuclear Dude, energy. Is that in there? I don't know. Nuclear energy. Scratch CE5. The next podcast we're doing is why do we have a nuclear... Well, it was right, it was right there. It's taken off right away. Truth. Yeah, yeah, but in and, and, and like, and the, way it, the way it disappeared, man, it's like it, it started going off. And then out of nowhere, just boom. And Gone. just transformed itself out of physical it, space. Just, it, it, it's like not like it even quit. flew away no, just, it, it transmuted just, itself just, out and you were there the couple the, the next couple days i was telling you i started hearing yeah, the I noise heard, yeah no i heard that that it was like it sounded kind of like a helicopter over your house in miller but and there I, was no planes no helicopters there was we, it was a full moon yeah i said do you hear it there it is it never we was even out, we even went outside and sat on the front of your deck to listen to it yeah. And it sat there, I think, kind of the whole night. Yeah, it was. It, it came. Did, it came and went like, all night. But it was like it would almost get softer. Mm -hmm. But then, yeah. like, and then loud, it pulsated. Yep. Yeah. And so it was following so me around. There. It was following. Yeah. Don't surprise me, dude. It's probably still come back if I requested it. Honestly. Or it's probably above us. Right uh, it's not that it's thing that you never, you can never really, truly say like yes or no. Like you never know if that's. What if there's an armada? You know, right. like we drew out of my guardian book today, and like we we drew all the guardian angels, like that's who's protecting us. And then mm -hmm. like my oracle cards, like the Hecate card, literally said protection on it. Look at the protection. I mean, yeah. And I mean, all all the things that we're encompassing are protecting us. So that's exactly that's it. Why we we're able to talk like we are now exactly and you know there's no there's no fear of any of these things like and when i see when you see a mothership in the sky it's more of like 
Whoa! Like, okay. <laughs> you're in afraid. You're yeah. more mesmerized. You, wanna, you kinda wanna go on that thing, but can you take me for a Le- legit, legit though? Awesome. Legit. Like, why did y'all just fly off? Yeah. Come back. <laughs> you, just put a lot of cool people on there. you imagine? Come back. Like, oh man. So you know, I I I I relish the opportunity to continue this exploration into the ether and space and you know to these higher beings because I think it's cool. Like it's it's a it's a it's a realm that I think you know we're talking about this need for the human spirit to explore, and I think we all have that pioneering spirit. I think the CE five and going into these other dimensions Mm -hmm. is a is a realm of exploration that remains untouched for the most part well, definitely and it's something we even if it is like it's not talked about a lot and it's not you know a lot of people don't really know about it because no one really is like sitting there at the dinner table talking about it and we can be pioneers in this exploration we all can and, and we all have our own individual but i think exploration of it right now just because that's the first just thing talking, we're gonna start about, talking it. about yeah and that's one of the main reasons he even said you know, I, I really love being here because this happens and it's just, yeah, so, this did not happen like so it did amazing. in Montana. So, you know. And here I am having more experiences in the two or three weeks being back in South Dakota than I did. I think it's three weeks now. No, I think it's been three well, weeks. I've been outside what, four times. Or so, but, I mean, not like outside, like, but right. Like, we've only like, done that for, but each time it's been, Oh shit. Yeah. Yeah. And it's not like I didn't go out and look at the stars in Montana. I'm telling you, I was, it's, it was just different. It was a different environment, different vibe, different location, different people. My own energy was different, different certainly. Plane of existence. Mm-hmm. So, and you, you know, that's the vibe of that. That's cool. But that's to say, hey, anyone in Montana, you should still try C five. Give it yeah, a go. No, don't, uh, maybe don't, even try to travel around in Montana a little, or move around a little bit. Maybe if it's not in one spot, don't be caught the inside the confines of a city. Yep, I think that's, that's what it is. Great. The yeah. concrete jungle. Good advice. Ah. Uh, concrete jungle it's good to be out of that thing man i'm telling you glad to have you here bro. feels good to be home oh man what do you think should we like just pull a tarot card or something for the audience yeah would you want to do that could you do that with your with your with your power he has an he has a deck now don't be afraid <laughs> it's called an illuminati deck now this <laughs> you explain it as best as you can that's fine it's it is not a now tarot sometimes has a i've heard people call it like you know things of the devil or this and that it's not anybody who's following my work for a while and has interacted with tarot you know it's not that but even an illuminati deck you see it and you're like oh man, i don't know that's a little sus but it's one of the more powerful decks that i've seen and i think it's actually it's blessed by the light yeah they're the it's illumination but it's not this is not like a uh devil worshiper deck or you're being trapped into the matrix well, I of think, i think you can use any tool of divinity to project any you can path. you can if you want to do it in a dark way in a in a devilish way you know because there's a devil card in here and don't mean when you draw the devil card it doesn't mean you're the devil it's speaking to your desires and your temptations and mm-hmm. so, with that being said you can use anything to portray it how you want to. that's a great way to put it be very uh what's the word like um to judge something like that well even on top of judging like it's first of all tarot so they don't really understand it second of all then that goes straight to devil yeah oh, geez it's like y'all have no idea what else are you gonna say bad about it mm-hmm. like, but and I, I think even these groups the illuminati the freemasons i'm gonna get booted off youtube saying all these well, illuminati yeah. all these people they use these occult practices which are it's magical, it's magical and it's just an extension of source yeah. and the ether magical, and they literally. Either. they take it and turn it into black magic yep. that's not it's not the magic itself it's it's their use of it and their sat the way they sacrifice you know we can talk about sacrifice but try to pull a card and it didn't let me but this is this is what i want to uh end with our viewers is to keep them on yeah. on their toes so Let's... this is the reason why we did this podcast today okay we did it personally ourselves to kind of figure out but, for, but this is what we're everybody that is interested in what we're about what we're doing this is the ten of pentacles ten of pentacles and we're gonna read and we we're gonna read directly from the book because this book is so powerful in its words and its meanings it's a very good uh storyteller that's we're, we we can tell you exactly what the 
Pentacles without Pentacles. opening the book, but yeah. we want. I, I love the storytelling. It's a story. I love the storytelling of this book. Story of your path, of your oh, and like it opens it, right to it. Instantly open. That's just kind of magic. So, the wealth of family. I am very old, and the sounds of my bones cracking when I move is the sound of the earth shifting. The sound of my rasping breath is the sound of the wind in the mountains, and my fragile frame bends like the weeping willow over a river. But my experience is like the fountain of youth, and my wisdom the elixir of immortality, for I offer it to those that have come after me, and I will live on in their joys and achievements, their comforts and their challenges. I may not be blessed with many more days, but what I have I will give wholeheartedly to my family, so they may know where from where whence they came, who their ancestors are, and what awaits them in life. This they too will pass on to their grandchildren when the cracking of their bones is the sound of the shifting earth and the rasping of their breath is the sound of the wind in the mountains. And my, my days shall continue until the end of my life. Infinite. Mm. Beautiful. So kind of just a little synopsis of my own perception of what that means for this podcast. Um, I really do this for the love of my brother. He's not really my brother, but he is made of light, so he's my brother. Um, my family. You know, I like I like interacting with them. I like to talk about certain things, actually all things. I like to just experience life. So if that means the wealth of family, I mean, I'm the richest person in the world. You know, I don't need to get famous off of this stuff or have people listen to me or even care to listen to me. Like, just being able to talk to you about it is is the world to me so i appreciate it man i appreciate you and i appreciate we'll this man i was gonna say this is only the beginning and i think that's what that's what this is rooted in ultimately you know if people want to take something from it to really go within oneself and find that you know i think that's what we want to give that's what we're giving that's what we are giving and hopefully touches the hearts and people receive because that's what i'm feeling that's what it's what it's all about for me you know so yeah, this is magical. This is magical. Beautiful. Everybody, y'all have a wonderful day, night, whatever time zone exploration you are in. Explore the ether. I don't know. Do your thing. But we're going to be back with some great episodes soon. And uh, you got anything else you want to add? I'm Tony. <laughs> that is Tony. That is Tony. I'm Evan. And uh, this is going to be it. We'll see you on the next one, ladies and gentlemen.